2023, I had a I had a fall in the middle of the summer, and I landed on my neck, which was a bit unfortunate. So I was out f from competition for a couple of months, and uh, I also missed the European Championship. That's why I really decided to make a, a plan to do quite a few World Cup and try to qualify for the final uh, this year. I started in uh, Oslo and Helsinki, and then. Um, Normally I start off and then see how it goes and if you get some points then it's easier to get into other World Cups and we had a good start and uh, I was jumping Hans on and he was doing really well. So after that I, I knew I had a good chance to, to qualify to the final and I kept going and luckily I reached the goal and qualified to the final. I think Peter is um, absolutely a winner. He's someone who likes to have, of course, great success in sport and someone who works really hard for that. I think he works for developing his horses, for developing everything around his, his team and everything that has to do with the horses in every sense. Peter is a legend in Swedish show jumping, not only for all the success that he had, but I think that with All In he really brought show jumping sport into so many people's heart in Sweden that is not normally into a question, but that really likes sports. He has really learned to become a winner and I think he has learned to really set high goals and be brave about that, to say that winning gold is, is the goal for this competition. I think that uh, could be hard to, to carry sometimes if you have let people know that this is really what I do, I want to win. Så du kommer, när kommer du till Göteborg? Jag kommer till Göteborg på tisdag, för sen på onsdag ska jag ju tävla. Okej. Okay. Så hoppar jag eh, Catch Me Not i världskuppen och Al Capone ah, i Grand Prix. Jag hoppar på torsdag och sen väljer jag veckan som går Grand Prix, veckan som går världskuppen. Ja. Och sen går eh, Expression, går de småklasserna. Mm. Men om du tänker på till, till en final, då har du... Två alternativ då? Eller, nej, du kan ha båda hästarna i red. Jag kan ha, jag kan ha um, Catch Me Not och Vroom. Ja, med dig. Har du tänkt att göra det? Ja, nej, jag tror jag bara tar Catch Me Not. Jag får se om det känns det är långt kvar. Ja. För jag förundrar att du kan ju rida en i tidshoppning och sen... Men det är, se, det är långt kvar, vi får se ja. om det känns. Ja. Hoppas att någon, någon, någon är i form. Ja, ja precis. Ja. Och när kommer du upp? Ja, jag kommer på torsdag. Ja. Med barnen? Ja. Och sen har du... Eh... Jag har lite möten där. Och... Du har en signering på tor... fredag? Signering var... fredag. varje dag har jag okay. Ja, och nu, vilka tider är det på månaderna? Träning? Det är tidigt då? Ja, men jag tror man kan rida på framridningen under dagen sen. Så att... ja. Jag tror det är ganska lugnt. Ja. Yes, det låter som en bra plan. The Horse Show is a very special place for me because uh, I am born in the 70s and that show started in the 70s. So yeah, when I was really small, I watched it on television and I saw all the big stars, Hugo Simon and Pessoa and all the good riders right there. You know, I've been there almost every year since then. So it's a very special place for me. The atmosphere is just amazing. And I just hope, and I'm happy to see all the young people that are there because I know they also will set these goals and it's, it's a very um, important thing for Swedish show jumping that we have a show like that. I think that pretty much everyone involved in the question in Sweden has a relationship uh, with this competition. It's a place where history has been written, it's a place where dreams are starting to come true. So it's a show with a very, very special place in people's hearts here in Sweden. The World Cup is always the, the main class of these shows and you want to make a good plan so you come with a horse that's uh, fit when you get there and you try to manage them as well as possible there, see what they need. Some horses just need a small class to warm up and then they could go to the World Cup. With Catch Me Not, I, um, I only did one class before I did the 
I did the World Cup qualifying with him, and he was third. I lost the stirrup, and uh, it was a bit unfortunate, but uh, anyway, he managed to carry me around, and he did a great job. And uh, then he had one day rest, and uh, he was in really good shape. I really felt, you know, I schooled him in the morning, on the Sunday morning, and I felt, you know, even though he was 18, he felt like a really young, fresh horse, and, you know, I, I had a very good feeling going into the work. We've been to 13 venues, 12 different countries, and we're now at the final leg, the 14th leg in Gothenburg. And the road definitely now is one way to Riyadh. Well, the first impression when I looked at the World Cup course was like, wow, it's a lot of flowers. <laughs> it's like in the 70s, in the 70s it, was, uh, it was always a lot of flowers. And, and, and the fences uh, are a bit hidden in the flowers, uh, which I think is, is nice because it, it's quite personal and, 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 you know, I really enjoy it. And then I walk the course and like you always have to do, you have to walk the course, you have to make a plan that you think fits your horse. And then you see a few of the other riders and either you make some small changes or you stick to your plan. Now we go to Brazil, fourth in the Grand Prix last night. It's Yuri Mansour riding the 16-year-old gelding Vatiki. I saw that all horses before me, they went on six strides to the plank by the, by the entrance, but I know, uh, I know my horse have a big stride and I had to add one stride in the beginning of the course. And this is looking absolutely another brilliant round for this extremely impressive combination. But unfortunately, one hundredth of a second prevents Yuri Mansur going into the jump off, but that was almost cruel, one hundredth of a second. However, that's the sport. I was a bit worried to get time force because I saw some rider had a time force and I didn't, didn't want to have that. So I decided during my, my course that I'm going to stick to my plan and do the five strides just to be sure I made it, make the time. And now representing the Netherlands, Lars Kirsten. Just 23 years old, Lars. Riding 12 year old man, Halilia. This is a big moment for Lars Kirsten, 74.37 seconds the time. So Lars Kirsten with the 12-year-old mare Halilia go into the jump off here in Gothenburg. It's getting a bit louder in this arena because one of the heroes of the sport is the world number 28, Peter Fredriksen, riding the individual bronze medalist from the 2021 European Championships, Catch Me Not S. 18 years old, this lovely gelding. I jumped number one and then my plan was to jump number two and go down on eight strides to number three. But I ended up on nine strides and then straight away I knew I was a bit short on the time. So I needed to stay in my rhythm. So that's why I took away one stride to the plank at the entrance. And I knew we had a big stride and it jumped it really well. What a partnership these two have been. Looking at there isn't a single seat, hardly a single seat available in this 11,500 seater stadium. There was some short distances in the end, so I tried to uh, just slow him down, collect him, to make sure I gave him room enough to be able to jump them clear. And then also turn around and keep a bit of speed to the last fence, just to make sure I didn't get time faults. And this time I was I was lucky and all the poles stayed up and I was inside the time. This arena is going absolutely crazy because now Sweden are double-handed in the jump off. There are no crowds like there are in Gothenburg. This stadium is packed with excitement. The final jump off the final seven athletes in the World Cup Series 2023-2024. Lars Kirsten, Halilia for the Netherlands. They come inside the clock and it's how tight they dare. Looking at the footprints in the sand, he's come in as tighter than the previous two competitors. Still clear, super shot. 
This is looking tremendous for Lars Kirsten. He's going to gallop down to the last, the Longinoxa. He's up and over it, and that is a super clear. It's a very quick time. It's 35.44 seconds into the lead goes the 24-year-old Lars Kirsten and Halilia for the Netherlands. I knew that um, Kaspernak was in really good shape, so uh, and I never won a World Cup, so I really wanted to win, and especially in Gothenburg, I wanted to win. Pedro Fredriksson, the first of the two for Sweden, world number 28 in the Longines rankings, riding the 18-year-old Cardento Gelding, Catch Me Not S. I knew I had to make a good plan um, because I have a I had a few, well I had Henrik behind me, I know he's really fast, so that's why I decided to go inside to number three. I walked the, the lines before, so I knew it was uh, seven strides to number two, and then could either go outside or inside. And that's always a bit tricky to go outside and keep the pace, or go inside and make a tight turn. But I decided to go inside, and then I just didn't get a turn right. He's going to have to go some now. 35.44, he's still clear. I, um, I didn't find the first distance, I found the second distance, and then I had to really wait for that second, and then jumped up and down, and then I lost one second there. It's going to be very, very tight indeed. He comes down to the last, he's up and over, he stops the clock in 35.99. Into second place goes Peter Fredrickson with Catch Me Not S. I was a bit annoyed with myself that I couldn't get a stride right just to give him the victory because with a good turn there, we would have won. It's the best horse in the world. It's the best rider in the world, jumping in front of a home crowd. Henrik von Eckermann, King Edward. 35.44, time set by Lars Kirsten for the Netherlands. Rubs the pole, but it's still there. Gallops to the penultimate fence. He's up and he's clear. The crowds are starting to get very, very loud. 35.44, it's going to be very close indeed. He jumps the last. He goes into the lead. No, he doesn't. It's 35.72 into second place. As Lars Kirsten takes the 20 points, but more importantly, takes the Longin time pace, the accolade of being victorious in the Longin FEI World Cup qualifier. To win a, like a big class like that, I know that's an amazing feeling, you know, so I was really happy for him. He's a super nice guy, he rides really well, he's a future star and, uh, you know, I would like to win myself, but at the same time, I'm very happy for him. To win the launch in FEI World Cup, uh, for sure it takes a lot. You have to have a good horse, you have to be mentally strong to keep your focus all the way. And then, as always, you have to have the luck on your side. That's what I hope to have in a few weeks.